A shabby without any bite? Meg 2 The Trench isn't making a splash with Rotten Tomatoes critics for some surprising reasons. In 2018, director John Turtletop surprised the audience says with his kinetic and intriguing The Meg. Based Steve Alton's novel of the same name, the film follows a megalodon that pesters a group of scientists and very exhausted Jason Statham. While it was far from perfect, The Meg was good summon, giving viewers a compelling, action-heavy journey to the depths of the ocean. In a landscape littered with superhero flicks and reboots, The Meg was a breath of fresh blockbuster air that featured an all-star cast and a competent narrative about big sharks. What else could anyone want? Audiences around the world were received to Turtle Top's nightmarish shark flick, helping The Meg gross over $500 million at the global box office. After proving itself as a global financial success, it wasn't surprising to hear that Warner Brothers was interested in a sequel. Jonas, we've got nothing left. Almost nothing. Ben Wheatley, the auteur behind Free Fire and Kill List, was brought on board to end the sequel. Seeing as Wheatley had never helmed a large, big-budget blockbuster before, having the British director steer the Meg 2 The Trench ship felt like an inspiring decision. Could Wheatley turn a potentially bloated sequel into a genuine, pulse-pounding work of deep-sea horror? It doesn't look like it. Rotten Tomatoes critics were the first to see Wheatley's Meg 2 The Trench, and they're not very enthusiastic about it. IGN critic Matt Donato was not impressed with the film at all, writing, Meg 2 The Trench has all the excitement of fishing solo for two hours without a single bite. Ouch! Rotten Tomatoes critics were surprisingly disappointed with how Meg 2 The Trench is argued with elevating itself instead of fully leaning into its insane premise. Graham Tuckett of Stuff wrote, Meg 2 is burdened with an actual plot. The sharks barely show up, and when they do, they are such clearly CGI creations. It really does look as though Statham and Chums are being attacked by characters from an animation that have stumbled into the wrong film. Death several points along the way, you could bang your hand to your forehead in reaction to how random and non-transporting the action is, even when there's a great deal of it. This is a bad idea. Just a little bit. Well, a movie about giant sharks certainly won't appeal to everyone. Is the film fun, at least? Cinema Blend's Eric Eisenberg was particularly disappointed in the film, saying, Meg 2 The Trench wants to just be seen as dumb fun, but it doesn't earn it. Clearly, most of the critics took to Rotten Tomatoes before the film's release weren't fans of Meg 2. Some critics went ahead and even labeled the film as boring, perhaps the worst assessment any project can receive. But despite the mediocre reviews, Meg 2 The Trench still has some fans in its sunken corner. Callum Marsh of the New York Times had a few positive sentiments about the film, saying that the sequel features a spark of wit that fits in effortlessly with its narrative. Katie Walsh of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch also acknowledged the film's shortcomings, but couldn't tell but come around to Wheatley's chaotic vision as it wrapped up, writing, About halfway through Meg 2 The Trench, this self-serious sequel suddenly becomes funny, leaning into the slippery silliness of a summer shark flick. Liz Shannon Miller of Consequence put it bluntly, reminding viewers that this is ultimately a movie about giant sharks, saying, Meg 2 The Trench is a far more coherent entry in the genre than others, with effects work that's several notches above the rest. While most Rotten Tomatoes critics are sour on the Meg sequel, there are few that find the film compelling enough. Will these mixed to negative reviews impact the film's box? Only time will tell.